Welcome to This Day in Baseball. We bring you everything from the thrill of victory to the agony of defeat and every milestone and oddball event in between. Today's game is courtesy of ThisDayInBaseball.com. You can come for a peek, make friends for a lifetime. Before, after, and during the game, check out the links below the video and visit the player pages, parks, and teams as you listen to this blast from the past. You can catch us on every social media platform. And I want to do a special thanks to MLB Classic Radio Archives for this broadcast. Now, let's play ball. Rib stands deep in the box. The pitch by Pierce is a foul back off in the lower deck. So the count remains at two strikes with Yogi Berra working back of the plate for the American League team. Ted Williams in left field. Mickey Mantle is playing today in center. And there was some question as to whether the great center fielder of the Yankees would be able to make it. He's wearing a knee brace, which extends from his upper thigh down below the cap of his leg. And uh, he'll be moving. Here's Pierce's delivery, a let-up curve that's just a little high for a ball. One ball, two strikes. Johnny Temple. The Red Legs uh, uniform uh, with that vest-like top is rather cool. And when Ted Klusiski, uh gets into the game a little later, I imagine you'll hear some sounds from the fans. The 1-2 delivery, a curveball, throws his bat, misses, and the bat goes down to third base coach. Freddie Hutchinson, strike three. Billy Pierce records the strikeout, the first of the All-Star game as Johnny Temple goes down waving. Frank Robinson batting in the number two spot for the Red Legs, hitting 313 as 18 home runs on the National League season. He made quite a jump from the low minors to the Cincinnati Red Legs and has really been powering that ball. Open stance, stands up in the front part of the box, takes a swing, and he cuts back on a foul. Frank wears number 20, tall, slender youngster, born August the 31st, 1935. He was just a baby when many of these fellows who will be seeing action today were playing. Billy Pierce into his windup. The pitch on the way. A curveball. He swings out and he misses strike two. So the left-hander, Billy Pierce, being used by manager Casey Stengel to start off this All-Star Classic, continues to uh, handcuff the first two men to face him. George Kell backs up at third, about three steps off the line. Keen halfway between second and third at short. The outfield pulled to left. The wind blowing out towards right center field. 350 feet down the left field line, 320 down the right field line, and Pierce is ready. Here's the two-strike pitch. A swing and a miss, strike three. So Billy Pierce faces two men, strikes two out, and there's two out in the top half of the first inning. The National League now sends up Stan the Man Musial. And Mr. Musial stepping in there now is appearing in his 13th All-Star game, a new record. And he'll get quite a hand. Musial, a left-hand batter, deep in that batter's box, feet close together, hunched up. The pitch by Pierce, a ground ball hit to the left side. Keen to his left has it. The throw to first out. So Sam Musial bounces out short to first. Harvey Keene to Mickey Vernon. And in the top half of the first inning for the National League, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on, and Billy Pierce strikes out two of the first three men to face him. And at the end of the first half inning, the score, National League nothing, the American League coming to bat. Harvey Keene steps in there. Harvey, you're representing the American League at shortstop, number seven. Currently hitting 354 in the American League season. Takes a look at a fastball from Bob Friend over the inside corner. Bob Friend is working his first All-Star game, and I believe he is the first Pittsburgh Pirate ever to start an All-Star game. The outfield shaded to the left. Keene swings over a close stance. The pitch, a fastball, low and outside. One ball, one strike. Friend looks in. Ed Bailey from the Cincinnati Red Legs doing the catching. Ken Boyer backed up at third. The pitch to Keene. A curveball. There's a line drive. Speared by Ken Boyer. Boyer goes to his left. Speared that ball. And Harvey Keene goes back to the American League dugout talking about the great play of this youngster. 
So Keene lines out to Ken Boyer at third. Fine play by the youngster. Moved to his left and dove for the ball and came up with it. The batter now is the left-hand batting Nellie Fox. Stands deep in the box. Swings over a close stance. The pitch by friend. He swings on this one. Pops one foul going over near the stands. And over is Boyer. He can't get to it. It's out of play. One strike. We're in the last half of the first inning. The All-Star game in Washington. The American League batting with one out. Nellie Fox the batter. No score. Friend is ready to pitch on the way. Denelli Fox takes a swing on a fastball outside. Strike two. Friend has an unusual delivery in that he starts in his windup one time, then swings his arm out to the right and around. And it keeps the batter uh, searching for that ball. The pitch by Friend on the way. A ground ball to the right side. Moving over to his left is Johnny Temple. Makes the throw to first a day long out at first. So Nellie Fox bounces out second and first, two out in the last half of the first inning, and here's Ted Williams. Ted Williams steps in there now for the American League. Ted is appearing in his 12th All-Star game. Brooks had a fastball on inside for ball one. Ted stands up there, 6'4", 198 pounder. Birth date, August 30th, 1918, San Diego. In 32 times at bat in the All-Star game, has 12 hits. Bob Friends ready to work the one ball pitch to Williams. He looks at a curve that gets the inside corner for a strike. One and one. Friend has a good fastball that moves around. He throws a slider, and he has a good curve. Two out, nobody on. Last the first, no score. The right side of the infield backed up with the infield shift on. The shortstop, McMillan, the right side of second base. There's a let-up curve outside. Two balls, one strike. Ken Boyer, the third baseman, flying halfway between second and third, about two steps off the line. The shortstop, McMillan, is over about five steps to the right of second. Johnny Temple, the second baseman, halfway between second and first, and long deep at first. The pitch to Williams, a swing and a miss on a fastball. And it's now two balls, two strikes, two out. No score, nobody on. The outfield has... Stan Musial deep in the shadow of the big fence in right field. Here's the 2-2 delivery to Williams. Looks at a fastball just outside ball three. Billy Pierce faced only three men in the top half of the first. Bob Friend has faced two men so far with two out. Williams with a 3-2 count. Friend's into his windup. Here's the payoff pitch to Williams. He swings. He misses. Strike three. So, in the last half of the first inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. One strikeout for Bob Friend, and the score at the end of the first inning is the National League nothing, the American League nothing. Well, stepping in for the National League is the youngster who made the sensational grab, young Ken Boyer. He's hitting 321, has 20 home runs for the National League. And he swings from an open stance, holds the bat down and away, close to his belt. Swings as the drive going out over second base. It's in there for a base hit. Mantle moves to his left, throws into second to Nellie Fox. And Ken Boyer gets the first hit of the All-Star game of 1956. A single into center field. That's the first hit off Billy Pierce. And up now for the National League All-Stars, Gus Bell, the center fielder from the Cincinnati Red Legs. Gus hitting 289 has 15 home runs. Gus swings from uh, almost an open stance. His right foot is pulled back about an inch uh, further from the plate than his left foot. The outfield straight away. The pitch by Pierce. A fastball poured through there. Swung on and missed. Strike one. George Cal protecting against the left-hand batter at third base about two steps off the edge of the infield grass. Nelly Fox deep at second. Mickey Vernon holds against the runner at first. Boyer, he leads away about three steps. Pierce has a very deceptive pickoff delivery, and the pitch is swung on a miss, strike two. Billy Pierce keeping that pitch high and inside to Gus Bell, the center fielder from the Cincinnati Redlegs. Ted Williams out in left field. Straight away in center is Mickey Mantle. Deep in right is Al Kaline of the Detroit Tigers. Again, Ken Boyer leads away from first. Vernon holds against him two, three steps away. 
Billy Pierce reads his sign from Yogi Berra, checks the runner at first, the pitch is swung on a miss, strike three. So Billy Pierce strikes out Gus Bell. That's his third strikeout. One out for the National League in the top of the second inning. No score, and Ken Boyer on at first, and the batter now is Dale Long. Dale has 17 home runs. He's currently hitting at even 300. So Dale Long, number three from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Born February 6, 1926. Stands deep in the box. Pierce looks to Boyer at first. The pitch is a little inside for a ball. Fastball. It sort of popped inside. Outfield straight away. Overcast skies with the sun being blocked out. Dale is from Springfield, Missouri. Billy Pierce out there in the mound. Looks to Boyer at first. The pitch to Long. A swing and a foul back just below us, and it's two strikes. Check that count. One ball, one strike. One out, one on. Cal again moves in a little closer to third, protecting against Long. The pitch is taken high outside, and it's two balls, one strike. National League has on deck Ed Bailey, the fine catcher from Cincinnati, who has a 335 batting average, has 14 home runs. Pierce again looks to first base. Here's the pitch on the way. There's a fly ball foul going on top of the roof back of third base. And the count goes to two balls, two strikes. The playing field here in Griffith Stadium is in beautiful shape. Grass reflecting a mighty fine green and reflects the great work of the ground uh, keepers here and getting the ballpark in great shape for this classic here in 1956. Two balls, two strikes. A runner on at first is Ken Boyer. We are in the top of the second. A pitch by Pierce to Dale Long. A fastball strike three call. So Billy Pierce uh, continues to write a new chapter to the strikeout story as he adds his fourth strikeout in the six men he has faced so far. So there's two out in the second inning. The batter is Ken, or Ken Boyer on at first, and the batter is Ed Bailey. Bailey also bats from the left side. Where's number six? Ed is from Strawberry Plains, Tennessee. And he's having a mighty fine year. Stands deep in that left-hand batter's box, holds a bat right on the end, crouches just a little, holds a bat back like a whip, and looks at a curve outside for ball one. Billy Pierce, the strong left-hander for the Chicago White Sox. Again, demonstrating his uh, great ability to get that ball over the plate. Boyer leads away, throw over back safely. And Pierce uh, side-armed him over to first base. Stepping uh, in ahead of the throw, getting his throw over there sidearm, almost got Boyer off. Here's the pitch, there goes Boyer, a swing, there's a throw down to Harvey Kane. He puts it on him, he's out at second. So with Ed Bailey swinging, Boyer trying to go to second. The throw went 2-6. And in the second inning for the National League, no runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. And at the end of one and a half innings of play, the score, National League, nothing. The American League, nothing. Mantle goes into today's game carrying a 371 batting average in the American League, has 29 home runs. This is his fourth All-Star game. Has uh, takes a big swing and misses on a fastball by Bob Friend for a strike. Mickey, in 13 times at bat, has hit one home run in all-star competition, has a 308 batting average, 13 uh, doubles, two triples, and he takes a look at a fastball that's slow. So it's one ball, one strike. Mantle uh, goes into today's game, leading both leagues in uh, the department of home runs and the batting average. Swinging over a closed stance, Bob Friends into his windup. There's a left curve that catches the outside corner for a strike. So it's one ball, two strikes. Mickey Mantle. Longing to stroke one. Here's the pitch by Friend. A fastball on the outside corner, strike three call. So Bob Friend is uh, not taking a back seat to anybody. He racks up his second strikeout. And the batter now for the American League is Yogi Berra. We are in the last half of the second inning. There is no score. Only one hit, 
Ken Boyer's single to start off the second inning. Yogi Berra hitting 281 in the regular season takes a swing and there's a ground ball out into left field for a base hit. So Yogi Berra gets the hits even with a single into left center field. Smash hit between the shortstop and the third baseman. And the American Leaguers have a runner on at first and Al Kaline, who's from Baltimore, Maryland, steps in there. Al is currently hitting 282. He is no stranger to all-star game competition he was in last year. Bob Friend looks to Barrett first. The pitch, there's a swing and a drive into center field. Moving in two steps with plenty of room is Gus Bell. He's got it. So Al Kaline, first ball swinging, lines to the center fielder. And there's two out. Barrow on at first, and Mickey Vernon steps in. Mickey, a great favorite here in Washington, where he played for so many years. Having a great season with the Boston Red Sox, hitting 324, has seven home runs, left-hand batter, Barrow leads away. The outfield straight away, the pitch by friend, a fastball high and inside. Ball one. Scoreless ball game. We're in the last half of the second inning. The American League at bat. Bear on it first. Long holds against him. Here's the pitch to Vernon. He swings and misses for a strike. One and one. So about friend seems calm, cool, and relaxed out there. Boyer back about three steps off the line at third. Friend checks the runner first. There's a swing and a foul coming back on a curveball, and it's one ball, two strikes as Mickey Vernon tries to get a hold of that curve and pull it into right field. National League, Stan Musial in right field. Center field is Gus Bell. In left field is Frank Robinson. Backed up at second is Johnny Temple. Long holds against Yogi Berra, the one-two uh, throw to first base back safely. Bob Friend, very quick with that throw over to first. Checks the runner, here's the pitch. Outside. And it's two and two. It was just such a pitch that Mickey Mantle was called out on strikes, a fastball that seemed to move. Yogi Barra edges away from first. Here's the 2-2 delivery. There's a swing and a fly ball hit into left center field. Coming on is Gus Bell. Still coming. He's got it. So in the last half of the second inning for the American League, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on. And at the end of two full innings of play, the score, the National League, nothing. The American League, nothing. Ed Bailey, who was up to bat in the second inning when Ken Boyer was sent down to second base and thrown out by Yogi Berra, is back in there. Bailey, with a 335 batting average in the regular National League season, which is now underway is in there, and Billy Pierce is ready to work. Here's the left-hander's delivery. It's a curve loan outside for ball one. George Bertie Tebbets, who competed in three All-Star games, is coaching at first base. Freddie Hutchinson of the National League, St. Louis Cardinals at third. The pitch is a fastball down through the middle for a strike. Learn one. Manager Walter Alston of the Brooklyn Dodgers getting two former American leaguers to be his coaches today. Here's the delivery by Pierce, a swing and a miss and a fastball, and it's one ball, two strikes. Freddie Hudson having been with the Tigers, and, of course, Freddie Tebbets having been with the Tigers in Cleveland and Boston. The outfield backed up. Infield on the right side, deep, with Vernon two steps off the edge of the outfield grass. Fox one step off the edge at second base. There's a curve outside. Just missed. Two balls, two strikes. Ed Bailey leading off for the National League in the third inning. Scoreless ball game. Each team with one hit. And Billy Pierce has struck out four of the six men to face him. The pitch to Bailey takes a look at a curve outside for ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Yogi Barra doing the catching for the American League. Pumps that ball back out to Billy. Billy and Yogi uh, could well become uh, rather well-worked battery mates. They've worked before in the All-Star game, and they're working here today. Here's Pierce with a payoff pitch to Bailey. 
There's a swing and a high fly that will pop right out near the coach's box. And Mickey Vernon moves as the wind brings it over almost fair, but about two steps foul. He squeezes it for the out. Ball was popped up. And the breeze, which is blowing in from right field out towards left center, almost brought that ball back into fair territory. So Bailey fouls out to the first baseman, Mickey Vernon. Roy McMillan, the shortstop from the Cincinnati Redlegs, batting in the number eight spot for the National League, now steps in. Roy is currently hitting 282. He has two home runs. Swings over a closed stance, and Billy Pierce delivers high and outside. Ball one. Mickey Mantle moves over a few steps in left center field. Deep in left is Ted Williams. Kell is about two steps off the foul line, even with the bag. Pierce ready, delivers, and it's a fastball over but low. And it's a two-ball count. Roy McMillan wears glasses, steps back in there. Pierce is ready with a two-ball delivery. Outside, ball three. So this is the first batter that Billy Pierce has faced in which he has run the count to the wrong side of the ball and strike indicator. There is a left-hander working in the American League bullpen and it looks like Whitey Ford. Here's the pitch by Billy Pierce, a fast ball strike. Three balls, one strike. So Casey Stengel may well go with his promise of using three left-handers in a row against the power-laden National Leaguers. The 3-1 pitch. Swung on, foul back, and the count runs to 3-2. and two. Hitting off the facing up above the press box. While we wait for a new ball, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. WGN Radio Chicago, serving the Middle West. Here's his next pitch, swung on, fouled off, going up into the upper deck, back of first base. And every seat here in Griffith Stadium today is jammed. The high wall that runs from the right field corner out to left center field is, they tell me, 31 feet high. The pitch by Billy Pierce is swung on and fouled back again. So Roy McMillan is acting as a souvenir distributor here today, sending them around to everybody. And the press box occupants up there start to wave the white flag. They are in the direct line. And uh, Roy McMillan's starting to get the aim up there. The outfield for the American League shaded around the left. Keene is deep and short. Pierce into his windup. The payoff pitch to McMillan is inside for ball four. So Billy Pierce gives up his first walk. And McMillan becomes the second base runner for the National League, and he's on at first, and the pitcher, Bob Friend, is coming up. So here comes Bob Friend. Stepping up there to see what he can do against Billy Pierce. Bob is well thought of as a hitter by his manager, Bobby Bregan, over at Pittsburgh. He bats from the right side, wears number 19. Pierce now will pitch from the stretch with McMillan on at first. Vernon holds against McMillan. He leads away the pitch coming. There's a tempted bunt foul. So Friend apparently displays the strategy of Major War Alston to move the runner to second as he tries to bunt it. George Kell now moves in a few steps closer at third base, about one or two steps off the edge of the infield grass. The outfield straight away. Nelly Fox and Harvey Keene getting their signal set. McMillan again edges away. Vernon holding against the run of the pitch on the way. There's the bunt out in front of the plate. Down off the mound as Pierce makes his throw to first. A high throw but grabbed by Fox and out at first. The sacrifice is good. And the play goes from Billy Pierce to Nelly Fox. 1-4 if you score with us. But the sacrifice for Bob Friend is good. And on at second now is Roy McMillan. Two outs. The batter is Johnny Temple, the second baseman. He struck out in the first inning. And the overcast skies remain with us. A heavy layer of cumulus clouds overhead. But the weather prediction is that it may be cloudy, but no rain. We are in the top of the third. There's no score. The National League has a runner on at second base. 
Two out. And the batter is Johnny Temple. Right-hand batter, Pierce Reddy. Looks, throws, and a fastball over the outside corner for a strike. Bertie Tebbets down at first base, chirping it up for his uh, second baseman, Johnny Temple. All right, Pierce is ready. Looks back to McMillan. The pitch on the way is a foul as Temple tried to pull away from a curveball. It struck his bat, bounced off for a foul. Two strikes. Apparently, Temple thought it was a fastball, but it broke in on his bat. He didn't uh, have an opportunity to pull it out of there. Two strikes to count. So Pierce now, way ahead of the batter. Nelly Fox makes a bluff over toward second to keep McMillan from taking too big a lead away from second base. All right, ready now as Billy Pierce looks to second the pitch. Fastball high. And it's one ball, two strikes. One and two. Pierce out there looking into Yogi Berra. McMillan keeps pumping that bat. Kell is backed up at third, guarding the foul line. Millen edges away. The pitch is fouled on the basket up near the photographers back of the first baseline and up above the American League dugout. So the count is one ball, two strikes. Two out runner at second, no score. Top of the third. And the fans, uh, of course, here today, the National League fans, are waiting for the vaunted National League power to explode. And the American League fans are here to see... Well, the American League has some power, too. Three ball, driven out into right center field. It's going in for a base hit. Here's McMillan making the turn at third. McMantle's throw is coming in, and it is cut off. And the first run of the ball game is registered by the National League. A little Texas League single out into right center field for Johnny Temple. Drives in the first run of the ball game. So Roy McMillan from the Cincinnati Redlegs drew the walk, sacrificed over by Bob Friend of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and Johnny Temple of the Cincinnati Redlegs singling into right center to bring him home. Here's Frank Robinson up there, struck out his last time right-hand batter of the pitch, swings on this one, fouls it over the top of the roof. Score National League one, and the American League nothing. Two out runner at first. The outfield pull to the left with Mantle a few steps over in left center. Williams deep in left field. Al Kaline around in right center. The pitch is a fastball inside. And it's one ball, one strike. Well, Billy Pierce was going right along until he issued the walk and the sacrifice and the single. Temple leads away from first. The pitch to Robinson takes a swing and a fastball, fouls it off. And it's one and one. Well, the way these two ball clubs are built, and with the great managers they both have in Walt Austin of the National League and Casey Stengel of the American League, it is reasonable to assume that today's game may certainly go as long as last year's battle up in Milwaukee, which was won in the 12th inning by Stan the Man with the big swing. So it's one ball, two strikes. The runner at first leads away. There's a swing and a miss for strike three. That's all for Frank Robinson and the National League. In the third inning, they pick up one run from one hit, no errors, and one man left on. So at the end of two and a half innings of play, the score is the National League one, the American League nothing. Say, if you think firemen are the fastest dressers in the world, you ought to see these ball players after a game. Boy, they're in and out of that locker room in nothing flat, especially when they've got a tight schedule. That's one reason most of them use the Gillette Super Speed Razor and why so many have switched to those instant lather shaving creams. They tell me that one out of four men who use shaving cream go for instant lathers, and I believe the percentage is higher among ball players. Instant lathers have it for men in a hurry, and you can say that again for Gillette Foamy. Touch the nozzle, there's your cream. Rich, full of moisture... Just spread it on your face and shave. There's speed for you, and you can't beat it for convenience. A lot of men say there's just nothing like Gillette Foamy for comfort, too, and with it you get an important extra. That's K34, an exclusive antiseptic that destroys harmful bacteria on your face. 
If you're an instant lather man, this is for you. And if you haven't used instant lather, foamy is sure worth a trial. 79 cents gets you a three-month supply. How can you lose? Moving into the last half of the third inning, for the American League, George Cal. The five strikeouts by Billy Pierce misses by one the record of six in an all-star game held by Carl Hubble, Vandermeer, and Jensen. So I thought we might pass that along to you folks. George Cal is in there. The first pitch from Bob Friend is low and outside for a ball. Cal swings over a slow stance, wearing the Baltimore uniform, which has uh, orange and black socks. Friend with a big kick and the fastball that's a little outside. Ball two. And we're going to have our first pinch hitter of the ball game since Billy Pierce worked his three innings. We will have a pinch hitter for Pierce, and it looks like Harry Simpson of the Kansas City A's. There's a swing and a drive deep in the left field. Going back is Frank Robinson near the fence, reaches up and he grabs it. Line drive off the bat of George Cal. Frank Robinson backed up about 360 feet away, reached up over the top of the six and a half foot fence and snared it. So Kell lines to Robinson in left field. Harry Simpson of the Kansas City Athletics will now bat for Billy Pierce. Simpson has a 304 batting average. He has 61 RBIs. He has 12 home runs. Swings over a very close stance. Friend delivers. There's a swing and a miss for a strike. Harry started uh, out in San Diego, played with Cleveland, now with Kansas City, and since he's switched to glasses, has really found himself. The pitch by Friend is a fastball in the outside corner for a strike. Mr. Friend is very deceptive. He really pumps that ball through there. Here's the pitch. Swing, and the pitch is dropped. Bailey makes the throw down to first. So it's a strikeout for Bob Friend on Harry Simpson. Warren Spahn is starting to loosen up in the National League bullpen. So Simpson batting for Billy Pierce strikes out. And for Bob Friend, that is his third strikeout. And the assist, of course, the play going 2-3 with Bailey throwing to the first baseman. Harvey Keene, a ground ball to the left side, going through, out into left field for a base hit. Keene wrapping a curveball between the third baseman Boyer and the shortstop McMillan, getting a base hit. That's the second hit of the game for the American League. And the batter now is Nellie Fox. Nellie, pound for pound, is one of the great competitors in American sports. And his little blooper just a few years ago over in Cleveland uh, in the presence of the big swinging men was the deciding blow of the ball game. In close at third is Boyer. Nellie, who's a great bunter, chokes up a little on the bat. The pitch by Friend is a fastball high and outside for a ball. Harvey Keene on at first. The score is National League 1, the American League nothing. We're in the last half of the third inning. Two out. One ball to count. Outfield straight away. Keene leads away. The pitch has a swing and a slashed foul going up into the upper deck, back of third. Bob Friend, with the new ball, turns his back to the batter, Nellie Fox. Nellie gets that left foot right back in that restraining line. Keeps pumping that bat. Friend looks to Keene at first to pitch to Fox. There's a swing and a ground ball hit through the opposite side of the left field line, and it is a base hit. So Nellie Fox hitting the ball to the opposite side, hit by the shortstop and the third baseman in left field. And the American League have two men on. Two men out, and Ted Williams is up. Williams is uh, certainly enjoying a great year and has always been one of the fine examples to the youngsters of America, and it is only apropos that Ted should have been chosen and accepted to be the leader of the Jimmy Fund in Boston this year. The outfield pull to the right, right side of the infield deep, and the infield shift is on for Williams, a curveball for a strike. The shortstop is on the right side of second base, the second baseman halfway between second and first, and Long is about four steps off the foul line, deep at first. 
Keene on at second. Nellie Fox on at first. The batter's Ted Williams. One strike to pitch. A curveball. Let up curve is way outside. One and one. Williams in batting practice stroked a couple over that high fence out in right center field. Where's the shin guard? A short job about ten inches on his right leg to keep from fouling the ball off his foot. All right, Boyer is over near third. A fastball outside. So it's two balls, one strike. The batter, Ted Williams. The National League with the infield shift on. Vacate practically the entire area that the shortstop covers from halfway between second and third towards second base with Boyer shaded over near the hole at short. Here's a swing and a foul by Williams, and it's now two and two. They invite Williams to hit to the left side. All three infielders on the right side are on the edge of the outfield grass. And out in right field, Stan Musial is practically up against the wall. Bob Friend is ready. Here's the pitch to Williams. He swings the ground ball to the right side. Dale Long in for it. He waves off the pitch. He steps on first, and the side is retired. So Williams grounds out to the first baseman in the third inning for the American League. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two men left on. And at the end of the third inning, the score is the National League one, the American League nothing. Whitey Ford is now coming on to do the pitching for the American League. As the National Leaguers uh, wait with Sam Musial standing uh, over near the on-deck circle for the National League as Whitey, the left-hander from the New York Yankees, moves in. So Casey Stengel is certainly going with his prescribed pattern of throwing at least two left-handers against the National Leaguers. Billy Pierce worked three innings, gave up one run. He was charged with two hits. He walked only one batter who came back to haunt him, and he struck out a total of five. Pierce got Robinson twice. He struck out Temple once. He got Bell and Long. And uh, outside of the base on balls and the single by Johnny Temple, he had almost a perfect performance. Whitey Ford now steps in there. Whitey from the New York Yankees has been in 17 games in the American League so far this year. Worked 118 innings. He has given up 106 hits. Walked 43. Struck out 65. He has won 10 while losing 4 and has a fine earned run average of 2.44. So Whitey Ford will take over for the American Leaguers as we move into the top of the fourth inning and Stan Musial comes up. Musial bounced out short to first his first time up. Yesterday, Stan was honored as the player of the decade. Stan the man. He got the nickname from the Brooklyn fans who became a little... Uh, tired of seeing uh, the great Musial constantly defeat their team, and they kept referring to him as, there's that man. Stands in there, Whitey Ford's ready, here's the pitch, and it's a curve outside, and low for ball one. The American Leaguers have Ted Williams in left field, Mantle in center, Al Kaline in right, Cal at third, Keene at short, Fox at second, and Mickey Varn at first. Here's Ford's next delivery to Musial, a curve that catches the outside corner for a strike. So it's one ball, one strike. Musial holding that bat right on the end, cocked away from his left ear, takes a swing, and he misses for one and two. One ball, two strikes. Fans have not had many opportunities yet to really uh, let go. Here's the pitch by Ford, a curveball foul back just below us, and the count remains, one ball, two strikes. Whitey's uh, given names are Edward Charles, born October 21st, 1928. He's 5'10 and a half, weighs 175 pounds. He's ready to work, and here's the pitch to Musial. Fastball, strike call. Musial just nods his head, says, yes, sir. So Whitey Ford continues that string of strikeouts. He adds one to the five that Billy Pierce had, and that's the sixth strikeout against the National Leaguers today. The batter is Ken Boyer. He got the first of two hits by the National Leaguers today, a single in the second inning. He was thrown out. 
When with two out and Bailey at bat, he tried to go to second. And Barris' throw down to Keene was in plenty of time. The outfield respectfully pulls to the left for young Mr. Boyer, and the pitch by Whitey Ford is a curve strike. Left side of the infield backed up. You can hear Nellie Fox, perhaps in the background, chirping it up. Deep in left center is Mickey Mantle. Here's the pitch by Ford. It's a curve that's high, and it's one ball, one strike. Ford is appearing in his third All-Star game. He's ready to work. The 1-1 delivery is a ground ball to the left side. King moves to his left. Can't quite get to it. And it rolls out in the left field for a base hit. Harvey Keene is playing despite some pull ligaments in his right foot. And uh, Harvey says they'd have to carry me out there on a stretcher to keep me from playing in this game today. We're going to have a pinch hitter for the National League. Willie Mays being sent up for Gus Bell. So Willie Mays comes on to bat for Gus Bell. Here in the fourth inning. Willie is currently hitting 288. He has 13 home runs. He swings from an open stance. His right foot right back in a restraining line. Left foot pointed down towards the shortstop. The outfield pulled the left. Ford looks to Boyer at first. He goes to first with a throw and safe at first. Whitey has had great success this year, picking runners off at first. Boyer edges away. Again, he goes to first and back safely. This is the top of the fourth. Here's the pitch to the plate. Swing by Willie Mays, and he misses. So that swing ought to start a little breeze blowing out there in center field. Willie was out to really wrap that one. Boyer at first leads away. One out. The pitch to Mays. The curveball. He drives it deep in the left center field. That ball is going to go for a home run. Just put the National League ahead 3-1 to one with a drive into the left center field bleachers. Well over the 360-foot fence. It must have gone up about 50 feet. Willie gave it a good ride. There now for the National League is Dale Long, the first baseman. Nobody on. One out. Looks at a fastball. It's a little outside for ball one. And you can hear the buzzing now as the explosion of the power of the National League begins to show itself. The pitch. Check swing, but too late to strike. Fans are still buzzing on that explosion that has put two big runs up there for the National Leaguers. The pitch by Waddy Ford today long. He gets strike two, a curve. Changed his mind, but it caught the outside corner. National League leads three to nothing. Top of the fourth inning, one out, nobody on. Long to be followed by Bailey. There's a drive deep in the right field. Foul on top of the roof. And drops down in there. That is Willie Mays' first home run in all-star competition. This is his third game. And I believe that's his uh, fourth hit. He was batting 600. There's a swing and a miss for strike three. Dale Long goes down swinging. Second strikeout for Whitey Ford, the seventh against the American, the National Leaguers today. And Ed Bailey, the catcher, who fouled out to the first baseman, Mickey Vernon, the third inning steps in. Two out, nobody on. Top of the fourth, and the score, National League three, the American League nothing. Whitey Ford looks to Bailey, left-hand batter, pumps a fastball on outside for ball one. Well, Willie made his first home run in all-star game competition, a very prominent one. Ford is ready. The one ball pitch outside. Curveball, ball two. So it's two and nothing. Two 
two out. George Kell moving in a few steps at third base, shouting out to his pitcher. Here's Ford's delivery to Bailey. He pulls back and checks his swing for ball three. He was going to take a swing. He changed his mind. And the fans are buzzing. He looks down to third base coach Freddie Hudson now. Whitey Ford with a 3 0 pitch. Comes with a high outside curveball, and it is ball four. So the walk is issued to Bailey. And that is the first walk given up by Whitey Ford. That's the second of the ball game, at least by American League pitchers. And the batter now is Roy McMillan, the shortstop from the Cincinnati Redlegs, who walked in the third, sacrificed a second by friend, and came on to score with Temple single in the right center field. Whitey Ford looks to first. Mickey Vernon holds against Bailey. The pitch to the... No, the throw to first and almost had him. There's that very deceptive uh, throw by Whitey Ford. And he almost got Bailey. Here's the pitch. A fastball low and inside. So it's one ball. And, of course, with battery mate Yogi Berra working on the other end of that line, Yogi can give it to Whitey when he figures it... The runner is too far off. Mickey Vernon holds against the runner. Bailey, this time, uh, keeps rather close. There's a curve, ground foul out in front of the plate. One ball, one strike. Two out and one on. And we are in the top of the fourth. National Leaguers got one run in the third inning. A walk, a sacrifice, and a single. And they have added two here in the fourth inning. After one out, a single by Boyer and a home run by Willie Mays batting for Gus Bell. Ford goes to first again, back safely. Outfield shades around the left for McMillan, wearing number 11. Here's the pitch. A fastball, it's high. Both one strike. Next offering outside, and it is three and one with two out. On deck for the National League, uh, looks like Rip Propolsky of the St. Louis Cardinals. There's a strike, a curve on the outside corner. So the count is three balls, two strikes, two out, one on. And this will be a rather big pitch. Whitey Ford looks to Yogi Barra. Ed Bailey edges away. There he goes. There's a pitch, a ground ball to the left side. Hit out through the left side of the infield, going on the left field. Ted Williams in for it. Keeps Ed Bailey on at second. So McMillan bounces a single through the left side of the infield. That is hit number three off... Whitey Ford. And Rip Propolsky is coming up. Rip Propolsky is going to bat for the pitcher, Bob Friend. Jim Wilson is working in the American League bullpen, a right hander. Rapalski with an open stance holds the bat right on the end. A pitch by Whitey Ford, a fastball right down the middle for a strike one. Bailey on at second, McMillan on at first. National League is leading three to nothing. The pitch by Whitey Ford is swung on and a foul hit on top of the roof out into right field. Hits the edge of the roof and will come down into the stands. So the count is two strikes. Rip Propolsky with a 335 batting average takes the swing, he pops it. And coming back is Yogi Barra. He's still moving around. The wind carries it, he's got it. So Rapolsky fouls out to Yogi Barra. And in the fourth inning for the National League, two runs on one, two, three hits. There were no errors, and two men left on base. And at the end of three and a half innings of play, the score, the National League three, the American League, nothing. Warren Spahn is on the mound now for the National League. And Willie Mays playing in center field. 
And the batter for the American League is Mickey Mantle, batting from the right side, takes outside from Warren Spawn, ball one. Warren from the National League Milwaukee Braves. Into his windup, and the pitch on the way to Mickey Mantle takes a swing and he misses for a strike. One and one. Warren Spawn, on the season so far for Milwaukee, has won seven while losing seven, has an earned run average of 2.81. Left arm comes around the kick and a blazing fastball swung on and fouled. So it's one ball, two strikes. The National League's lead is three runs. They lead the American League three to nothing. Jim Wilson continues to work in the American League bullpen. Mickey Mantle, a batter. Mantle last time up, struck out. Here's the one-two pitch. Mantle takes the swing and he misses on a changeup. So Mantle swinging from the right side... Strikes out. From the left side, it was called out on strikes. There's one away. The batter now is Yogi Barra. Yogi has one of the three hits. A single into left field. Willie Mays in center for the National League. Stan Musial in right. In left field is Frank Robinson. Warren Spahn into his windup. The left arm comes around with a fastball strike to Yogi Barra. Ed Bailey still doing the catching for the National League All-Stars. Spawn is ready to work. The pitch to Barra. Takes a swing and hits a ground ball back out over second. Going back there is the second baseman, Johnny Temple. Gets it but can't make a throw. And so Yogi Barra gets his second hit of the ball game. A single back out over second base. So Yogi has two for two on the day. And the batter now is Al Kaline. And this youngster, as you know is the defending American League batting champion, and he is the youngest to win at the American League. He beat Ty Cobb by one day. Warren Spahn, pitching from the stretch, looks the runner at first. The pitch to K-Line is a popper out into center field. Mickey, uh, Willie Mays is out there, and he's got it. Willie moved in about a step. So there's two out. While we wait for the next batter, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual Radio Network for All America. This is WGN Radio, your Chicago Tribune station. The pitch by Warren Spahn, low and outside to Mickey Vernon for ball one. Mickey fly to center field his last time up. Runner on his first is Yogi Berra. The American League down three runs in the last half of the fourth inning. Two outs, Spahn's ready to kick and the throw, and it's a foul back by Vernon. Warren Spawn from Buffalo, New York. April 23rd, 1921, his birthday. Six foot, 172 pounder. This is Warren's uh, fifth All Star game. He's ready. Comes sidearm with a curveball, a ground ball to the right side. Temple going back for it. Flips to McMillan, a fourth and second and out. Temple backhanded that ball and flipped it to McMillan at second, and Yogi Berra was forced. So the fourth play goes four, six. For the American League in the fourth inning, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on. And Warren Spahn uh, comes in to do a creditable job for the National League. And at the end of four innings of play, the score, National League three, American League nothing. We move now into the top half of the fifth inning. And we're going to have a new pitcher for the American League. Whitey Ford worked only one inning, and he gave up two runs on three hits. He walked one, and he struck out two. Billy Pierce, who started, worked three innings for the American League, gave up one run on two hits, walked one, struck out five. So the veteran right-hander, who should be well acquainted with most of the National League batters, Coming on from the Chicago White Sox pitching staff, Jim Wilson. The Gillette Safety Razor Company, mighty proud to be bringing you this all-star game as another dedication of giving you the very best in sports. Jim Wilson now gets together with Yogi Berra out on the pitcher's mound to get straightened away on their signs. 
and uh, waiting to see uh, what's going to happen is Johnny Temple, who will be the first man up here in the top of the fifth inning. James Alger Wilson, born February 20th, 1922 at San Diego, 6'1", 195 pounder. Pitched no run, no hit game against the Philadelphia Phillies June the 12th, 1954. He allowed two base on balls and fans six. This is Jim's uh, first All Star game. He was with Baltimore in 1955, Milwaukee in 54, Milwaukee 53, Boston in the National League in 52. So Jim Wilson, number 30, a right hander and the first right hander to be used today by the American League comes in, and the first batter he'll face will be Johnny Temple, who swings from the right side. Temple had one hit in two times at bat against Billy Pierce. He did not face Whitey Ford. He drove in a run. Outfields around the left and deep. Williams in left. Mantle in center, and in right field is Al Kaline. Al Kaline. The pitch is a bunt down the third baseline. Coming in is George Cal. Grabs it, makes the throw, and it's too late. So Johnny Temple beats out a bunt along the third baseline. And that is the first hit off Jim Wilson. And that is hit number six for the National League. Milk Snyder is coming up to bat for Frank Robinson. So the cards are falling right into Major Walson's lap. With a right-hander due up there, Duke Snyder comes up, the Duker from the Brooklyn Dodgers. The throw to first by Wilson back safely is Johnny Temple. Duke wearing number four, wearing the light blue lettering of the Brooklyn Dodgers and the blue socks. Duke is hitting 295. Currently has 19 home runs and 43 runs batted in. Duke Snyder. There's a pitch by Wilson, low and inside, a curveball, and it's ball one. Duke Snyder stepped out of the box when he found the scoreboard had given him a couple of counts that he did not particularly want without being delivered to. Throw to first by the pitcher Jim Wilson and back safely is the runner Johnny Temple. Snyder waiting and the pitch is taken for ball two. So the Dukers up there. Two balls. They count. Wilson again takes his stretch, looks to first, delivers a swing and a miss. And Snyder was trying to slap that ball deep in the right field. The outfield is deep. The wind now has shifted a little bit. It's blowing from left to right. From left field to right field. In close at third is George Kell, about two steps off the edge of the infield grass. Keene is shaded over near second. And Fox is halfway between second and first. Mantle deep in right center. The runner at first leads away. Here's the 2-1 pitch to Snyder. Fastball strike two on the outside corner. Just below the belt. This is Duke's sixth All-Star game. Seven times at bat has three hits. 429 average. Throw to first back safely. Jim Wilson trying to keep Johnny Temple rather close with nobody out. And Snyder batting here in the top of the fifth inning. National League lead three to nothing. The pitch. There's a swing and a fly ball hit into left field. Williams with his glasses down. Moves in. Has range. And he takes it. So Duke Snyder flies to Ted Williams in short left field. And he brings up the number three batter in the National League lineup, Stan Musio. Stan bounced out short to first in the first inning off Billy Pierce. He struck out against Whitey Ford in the fourth. So Stan Musial is in there with his St. Louis Cardinal uniform. Stan does a sort of a little hula just before uh, he gets ready to take a look at that first pitch. Throw to first by Wilson. Back safely again is Johnny Temple. Musial hunched over. Looks out to the mound now. Wilson, the right-hander, delivers as a curveball swung on foul off of his instep of his right foot. 
So we have one out. One on, and the National League hanging on to a three to nothing score over the American Leaguers. National Leaguers have won five out of the last six All Star games played. The American League holds the overall percentage with the 13 victories and nine defeats. Wilson's ready again. Looks the runner at first. The throw to first back safely. So Jim Wilson is taking no chances on Johnny Temple moving off. Again, Temple leads away. Wilson, the right-hander, looks to first. The pitch to Musial. A ground ball. Glove by Wilson. Bounces off his glove. He recovers. Makes the throw out at first. Musial drilled one right back at the mound. Wilson knocked it down with his glove. Bounced off and bounced halfway back to the mound. Wilson down off the mound. Recovered in time to throw. Musial out at first base. There's no sacrifice in that play. It goes 1-3. There's two out. The National League has a runner on at second with Temple moving to second base. Who has two for two. Ken had a single in the second inning. And he's single in the fourth and rode home on Willie Mays' home run. Umpire Charlie Barry working the plate representing the American League. And at the end of four and a half innings, he will switch with umpire Babe Finelli. Ed Hurley of the American League at second, Artie Gore of the National League at first. All right, the pitch is on the way to Boyer. He takes his swing and loops one out into right center field. It's going to drop in there for a base hit. Here is Temple tearing for third, and he'll make it, and he comes around to the plate to score. It was a little blooper hit out into short right center field. Mantle, who was fairly deep in left center. And Kaline, who is in right center, all converged on the ball along with Nellie Fox. No chance to get it in Temple, who can streak, comes on to score. So that is another hit for young Ken Boyer, his third of the ball game. And the National League has now moved out of head four to nothing. The batter is Willie Mays. One time up, one home run. The pitch, there goes the runner, popped up, and it's coming back out of play foul. Boyer had taken off. So Wilson gives up two hits, and he gives up one run. And all three pitches that have been on the mound today for the American League have been nicked. Billy Pierce worked three, gave up one run. Ford worked one, gave up two runs. And Wilson, who's worked two-thirds of an inning, has given up one run off two hits. Mays, right-hand batter, number 24 on his giant uniform. The runner at first leads away. Wilson's ready, delivers, and there's a swing and a miss, and Willie loses his cap. Nice catch by Willie. He swung out from under his cap. It bounced up in the air, came down, and he did sort of a vaudeville routine with it, just skipping it right off there. Fans got a buzz out of that. Two strikes to Willie. Two out. Ken Boyer on at first base. Deep at third, guarding that foul line. Willie May is waiting. Here's the pitch. No, throw the first back safely. Look after the bullpen. There's a right-hander working for the American League. Here's the curveball. It's over for a strike. Willie pointed at the plate, and it is strike three call. It's all for the National League in the top of the fifth inning. One run on two hits, no errors, and one man left on. And at the end of Four and a half innings to play. The score is the National League four and the American League nothing. An automatic contribution when you buy your Gillette razor now. Well, this is Bob Neal. It's been my pleasure to take you over the first four and a half innings. And it's now also my pleasure to present you to the youngster who will carry over the last four and a half. And that's the young man who works the Washington uh, Senators here during the regular season. And it is my pleasure to present now Bob Wolf. Thank you very much, Bob Neal. We have some changes now in the defensive alignment. For the National League, Snyder stays in the ball game on the center field spot. Willie Mays has moved from center field over to right field, and Stan Musial has gone from right field to left field. So the defensive alignment for the National League in the outfield is now Musial in left, Snyder in center, and Mays in right field. We also have changes in the umpiring assignments now, with Dave Pennelly now at the plate, 
Charlie Berry, now at third base, Artie Gore at second base, and Ed Hurley at third base. All set to go as Warren Spawn looks in where George Kell is waiting at the plate. Kell is 0 for 1 in this game, and the first pitch is a called strike one. A curveball in the outside corner by Warren Spawn. Kell, last time up, lined one out to deep left, and Robinson took it out near the fence. Right out there now, there's a new left fielder, Stan Musio. Kell waits. He bunts, and it goes foul outside the third baseline. Strike two to George Kell of the Baltimore Orioles. Went from Baltimore to Baltimore from Chicago in that mid-June trade. This is a sixth All-Star game. Lifetime batting average prior to the season of 310. Count as two strikes. He swings. There's a slow grounder going out to McMillan, the shortstop. He's up with it. The throw to first base to Long, and Kell is out number one on the home fifth. So there's one away. In the home fifth is the score of the ball game is National League four and the American League nothing. And now coming up, Billy Martin is coming up is a pinch hitter in the ball game, Paul Wilson. Billy Martin of the New York Yankees in his first All-Star game, a right-handed batter, 28 years old, and a great clutch hitter for the Yankees. Steps in, and the first pitch is over on a curve for a called strike to Billy Martin. Going into the All-Star game, Martin is from batting 270 for New York, with four homers and 23 runs battled in. He wears number one in his uniform. Strike one the count, the left-hander ready. The pitch is wide, and the count now is one and one to number one with one out in this home fifth. Billy Martin, the batter, they're playing him around slightly toward left. Jam packed crowd watching the ball game this afternoon. Spawns pitch a fastball, which is over at the knees for a called strike two. And Martin steps out just a bit, smooths the dirt, and now decides to pick some up, get a bit of grip on that bat. It's a warm, humid afternoon here in the nation's capital. Good old fashioned baseball weather. Two strikes and a ball to count. Martin grips that bat right down at the end. Here comes Spawn's pitch. It's a ground ball going out to McMillan. The shortstop up with it. Over to first base to Long. And they're two away in identical fashion from short to first. Two outs in the home fifth as Harvey Keene, who has lined out to Ken Boyer, who made a terrific play back in the first inning, and since has singled to left field, comes up for the third time. Harvey Keene stepping in. Where's number seven in his uniform? He's playing, as Bob told you, despite that bad leg. He takes a called strike. Hobbles just a bit when he runs defensively, but of course he has that great eye at the plate, and he wanted to be in this game come what may. This is his fourth All-Star game. Husky right-handed batter. The pitch, a change-up, and there's a ground ball. Boyer dives for it, comes up with the ball, and the hop throws the first for the out. Ken Boyer with two scintillating plays this afternoon. Now with a hard hit ball inside a third. Boyer took a headlong dive, screwed on the hop, threw to first base, and Keen is out to retire the side. Three up and three down in the home fifth. And the score of the ball games after five innings of play. The National League four, the American League nothing. I give a lot right now for a shower and a shave, and make mine a Gillette shave with plenty of hot water, a good lather, a fresh blade. That's the way to cool off and get a pickup that carries you through the rest of the day. If you're not onto this one, get yourself a Gillette Super Speed Razor, a one that's made to match your skin and beard. There are three types, light, regular, and heavy, with varying edge exposure, edge angle, and weight. Drop into a nearby store and get yourself fitted to the Gillette Super Speed Razor that has what it takes for you. Well, that buzz you hear from the crowd is the big muscle man coming up to the plate, Ted Klusiewski. As you know, Ted has that uniform cut off so you can see those big arms coming out, those muscles just bulging, and there's no doubt about it. When a pitcher looks in there, he has to know that he's facing a menacing person at the plate. And there'll be a new pitcher in, too, to take over in the mound right now. Tom Brewer is just making the walk in. He'll be the fourth pitcher for the American League. Coming in here in the sixth inning of the ball game. So big Ted Klosowski steps up. Yogi Barrow's gone out to the mound. Talk things over. Here's Brewer taking his warm-up pitches. 
This is his first All-Star game. He comes from the Boston Red Sox, his third year in the majors, and he's a right-hander from Wadesboro, North Carolina. He has 11 wins and three losses going into the All-Star game today. 24 years old, he's 6'1", 175 pounds. Last season showed tremendous pitching potential. He was 0-6 when the year started and 11-10 when it came to a conclusion. Tom Brewer, right-hander from the Boston Red Sox. And here's the announcement, putting Big Ted in the lineup right now, batting for Dale Long. Ed Kozowski being announced to the crowd, batting for Dale Long. In the top of the six, with the National League is in front by a 4-0 score. This is Kozowski's fourth All-Star game. He's had an All-Star average of 4-17 and 12 at-bats. His tenth year in the majors comes from Argo, Illinois. Big, husky, left-handed batter with a lifetime average prior to the season of 303. Hit 47 homers last season, 22 this year to lead the league. He looks at a called strike one as Brewer comes in with a pitch on the outside corner. Ted has 55 runs batted in this season, a 282 batting average. Left-handed batter, menacing figure at the plate. Brewer comes in with a fastball, and it's fouled back. And that one glanced off Berra's right hand on the foul. And Yogi now is holding on to that hand. Looks like it hit the back of his fingers there, and George Chell, the third baseman, is coming to look at it as Yogi goes out to the mound of Brewer. That really stung him, but of course... Barrow wants to stay in there. He is not called for help. However, Kell has motion to trainer John Fadden, who is the American League trainer from the Boston Red Sox, to come out and look at Yogi Berra. So, uh, inspection is going on right now. At home plate with the umpire Babe Pinelli also looking on to see if Berra is all right to stay in the ball game. Train of Fadden of the Boston Red Sox asking Berra, who says he's all right, and Yogi stays in there as the trainer goes back to the dugout off on the right-hand side. So Big Ted Kozuski resumes his spot in the batter's box. They're playing him very deep. K-line and right is about 10 feet from that right field fence. 320 down the line, a big, tall 31-foot wall. Here's the windup now. Two strikes to count. Brewer's pitch is swung on. It's a grounder going foul outside of first base. And over to Bertie Tebbets, who is in the first base coach's box there. Last season, Kozuski had 113 runs battled in and 192 hits to lead his league in that department. The past five seasons, he's led the National League in fielding for a first baseman. Big husky guy who also used to play football back at Indiana University. He waits with a count of strike two. Brewers pitches a curve, which is wide. Almost gets by Berra, who's to reach out for it on the left. It's now two strikes, ball one. National League four, the American League nothing. Here at Griffith Stadium this afternoon in the nation's capital. Kozuski leading off here in the sixth inning. There's nobody out. Bailey is on deck. Kozuski rests that bat on the shoulder as Brewer looks in to get the sign from Yogi Berra. Now the right hand is set. Kozuski has the bat ready and waiting. The pitch comes in wide. Clue almost went for it. On the count now, it's two and two to Big Ted. There have been seven hits so far for the National League. The American League has had four. The National League has done all the scoring with one homer so far, a two-run homer by Willie Mays. Kozuski sends a fly ball into the left field line. Williams giving it a run. It lands in the left field corner, goes up against the bullpen fence in deep left field. Kozuski goes in a second standing out for the outfield. Pulled around for Kluzuski. He hit to the opposite field. A long fly ball inside the left field line. Rolled into the left field corner up against that bullpen enclosure for a two-bagger. The attendance just announced 28,843. Ted Kluzuski is on second base with a stand-up double. Vera is still shaking that hand just a bit. Here's Bailey now stepping in. He's fouled out, and he has walked. Left-handed batter. Keeps that bat low. He swings. There's a blooper going into short left. Williams charging in. He makes the catch. As he comes in fast behind the shortstop spot, Ted Williams coming in rapidly, and Bailey is out as Kluzowski gets back to second base. 
Harvey Keene hobbled a bit, didn't go out too far for that one. Williams came in and pulled it in for the out. That brings up Roy McMillan, who has walked. He scored the first run of the ball game on that walk, moving to second and a sacrifice, scoring on Johnny Temple's at the right center field. The last time that Roy was up there, he singled to left. There's one out, a man on second base. Tom Brewer doing the pitching. Here comes the pitch. McMillan takes high for a ball. Of the Cincinnati Redlegs, his first all-star game in his sixth year in the majors. 25 years old, 160 pounds, slim, right-handed batter. Comes from Texas. He's played in over 150 games each of the last four seasons. He cuts, sends a pop-up, out to first, and Vernon goes back, can't get it. It's over his head. Nellie Fox coming in behind him, made a swipe of the ball. Klozuski moves to third. That was a blooper, just lofted high enough to elude Nicky Vernon, who went back about 15 to 20 feet, reached up. It was a spinning ball, just off, lancing off the bat. Nellie Fox gave it a try, coming behind for him, but it fell in there, and that is hit number two for McMillan, who has had a perfect afternoon so far, with a walk and two base hits. Warren Spawn steps in now. Out in the bullpen, Herb scores, now warming up. Warren Spawn, bats left-handed. On third is Pozuski, on first is McMillan. There's one away. Infield double play depth. Here comes the pitch. And it's a curve for a called strike to Warren Spawn. The outfield playing just slightly around toward right. Not very much. Strike one the count. The pitch. It gets away from Yogi Berra as it hits the ground. Here comes Klozuski scoring. And McMillan goes to second base. A wild pitch as Kozuski scores for the National League. McMillan moving to second. Ball hit in the dirt and went back toward the base of the screen. The National League now leads by a score of five to nothing in the ball game. On second base, McMillan in scoring position. Count one and one to Warren Spawn. Herb score throwing in the American League bullpen in right center field. The pitch to Spawn. There's a ground ball going to the third baseman, Kell. He keeps the runner at second and throws Spawn out at first base for out number two. So there are two away now. McMillan is on second. And before Temple gets up, let's pause ten seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. And this is WGN Radio, your Chicago Tribune station. Johnny Temple, right-handed batter, who has two for three this afternoon, steps in. The pitch from Brewer is over the outside corner for a called strike one. This is Temple's first all-star game. Plays for Cincinnati in his fifth year in the majors. Comes from Lexington, North Carolina. Batting 281 prior to play this afternoon. Whips that bat right down at the end. And he looks at a curve as it comes in too low. And the count now is one and one on Temple. McMillan on second. One run has crossed the plate here in this sixth inning. Pazuski scoring after a double and a single one to uh, right field, to short right field, and then coming in on the wild pitch. National League leading by a 5-0 score. Brewer delivers, and it's a curve breaking over at the knees for a called strike two. Two strikes in ball one to Johnny Temple, who led all the regular National League second baseman in batting in 1955 with his 281 average. Join the red legs in 52. Two strikes, ball one. He swings and misses for the strikeout. Ball in the dirt. Barra touches Temple standing beside the plate there. The strikeout registered to retire the side. In this sixth inning with a total showing. A run, two hits, no errors, and a man left. And the score after the top half of the sixth inning. The National League, five. And the American League, nothing. Baseball's immortal Babe Ruth played in two All-Star games. The first All-Star game in 1933, the second just before his retirement. The Bambino's voice is stilled, but you can hear it again and again on a record album, The Greatest Moment in Sports, available free with the purchase of the Gillette Super Speed Razor at the regular price, $1. 
This is a 15-minute LP version of the $5.95 Columbia album. It features the voices of such heroes as the Babe, Lou Gehrig, Johnny Vandermeer, and on-the-spot reports of events like Lava Jitto's hit, Gianfrido's Catch. You hear Jack Dempsey, Newt Rockney, and I view accounts of great thrills in football, boxing, racing. There's only a limited number of these razor and record combinations left. Many stores are sold out, but if you hurry, you may find one. The record is free with purchase of the Gillette Super Speed Razor, Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser, and Travel Case at the regular price, $1. Ted Kluzewski stays in the ball game, takes over at first base as we move into the home sixth. And Nellie Fox now steps in. He is one for two this afternoon. Warren Spawn is on the mound. Nellie Fox of Chicago, left-handed batter, swings. There's a liner going to left center field. It drops in there for a base hit. Fielded by Duke Snyder, he throws into second base. And Nellie Fox is on first base with a single. Ed Williams coming up, and you can hear that crowd in the background playing in his 12th All-Star game. Batting 368 as he went into it today with five homers and 30 RBIs. Big Ted's had four batting titles. And in 1941, he starred in the All-Star Classic, his home run winning it. Williams steps in. He's 0 for 2 today. He looks at a cold strike and a curve in the outside corner, knee high. Williams has struck out, and he's grounded out so far this afternoon against the National League. On the count now, one and one to Ted. Mickey Mantle, there's nobody out. American League with a man on first base, trailing by a 5 nothing score in the home six. Here's the pitch, and it drops low. A little spin on that one as it came in. Count now, there's two balls and a strike. They're playing Williams, ganged up on the right side of the infield. Three infielders over there. Here's the pitch, and there's a high fly ball in a deep right center field. Snyder is going back near the bullpen. He's up against the bullpen. It's in there for a home run. And the pitch comes in wide to Mickey Mantle. Count now is two balls, strike one. Mickey Mantle in his fifth all-star game. Switch hitter batting right-handed against Southpaw Warren Spawn. Two balls and a strike. Here comes the pitch. And it's a swing and a miss as Spawn chain speeds on him that time. Two and two. Ted Williams is swatting on approximately 420 feet from the plate. Into the bullpen on the fly, scoring Ellie Fox in front of him. Here's the pitch, and there's a foul in the dirt behind home plate. Lawrence of Cincinnati, Brooks Lawrence, and Johnny and Haley of New York are warming up now for the National Leaguers in the bullpen out there in left field, out in front of the seats and closed by a fence. It's two and two. Here's the wind-up, and Spawn comes in with a curve, and there's a long drive to deep left center field. It is home run! Just going over the low fence in left center as Mickey Mantle comes around the bases with a home run, a liner, in about 370 feet over a six-foot-six fence. And in the first row there, here he comes, Mickey Mantle, the score now. The National League, five, the American League, three, two successive homers by the American League. Listen to this crowd here as excitement mounts. Walt Alston is coming up out of the National League dugout and going out to the mound. Mickey Mantle limping just a bit as he came around the bases, but you don't have to run fast when you get him in the seats. They were in the new seats up there, just clearing that fence, and some fan has a very fine souvenir of this occasion. Alston has gone out there to the mound. He's joined by Bailey and, of course, by the pitcher, Warren Spawn. And we'll see whether or not Spawn does or does not continue as the American League has come to life here in the sixth with three successive hits, a single, and two homers in a row. 
and that will be all. It appears for Warren Spawn. Paul Austin still out there at the mound. And all of a sudden, the tempo of this ball game has been accelerated. And at the same time, the American League getting into that scoring column for the first time in dramatic fashion. Johnny Antonelli getting set for that long walk. Here in this inning, Nellie Fox led off with a base hit. Single, out into left center field. Then Ted Williams with that towering homer into the uh, bullpen out in right center field and then Mantle's line shot into the new seats in left center has given the American League three quick runs to put them within two of the National Leaguers. Johnny Antonelli, the New York Giants, is coming in. Spawn. In the two innings he worked, giving up four hits, no walks, Struck out one, gave up three runs, all earned. Antonelli coming in the ball game here in the sixth. Johnny Antonelli in a second All-Star game. His seventh year in the majors. Throws left, bats left. He's 26 years old. Six 190 pounds. Won 14 last season, but in 1954. He won 21 for New York with an earned run average of 2.29, which led the majors then from Rochester, New York. Going into today's game, he had eight wins and seven losses. And number 43 of New York, Johnny Antonelli, is now warming up. The spawn has left the scene of action. He's joined now by Walt Alston, who is going back into the National League dugout. Well, the dramatic aspects of this game are something to behold. And in an all-star competition with such tremendous sluggers as we have witnessed this afternoon, having been assembled here, a ball game can change in rapid fashion. The National League coasting behind a 5-0 lead as the American League suddenly erupted with those two big names, outstanding home run hitters in baseball, Ted Williams and Mickey Mantle, thrilling the crowd with successive round trippers. Sherm Waller now comes up out of the dugout to pinch hit for Yogi Berra, who stayed in there despite getting cracked on the back of his fingers and had two hits while he was in the ball game, plus some fine defensive play. So Sherm Waller now comes in here in the sixth to bat for Berra. Waller of the Chicago White Sox wears number 10 in his uniform. His third All-Star game. He's looking for his first hit. He has no hits, no official at-bats. 11th year in the majors. Comes from Arkansas. Right-handed batter. Steps in. Swings and fouls the first pitch back for strike one. Johnny Atanelli is on the mound. Strike one to Sherm Lawler, batting 313 going with the Classic with six homers, 44 runs battled in. He spirals the pitch and the bat slips out of his hand off to the left. Sherm getting the bat back from the bat boy. Here's a fellow who sees a lot of action for the Chicago White Sox. And before stepping back in, he gets the rosin bag from the on-deck batter, Al Kaline, who is off to the right, kneeling down. Score of the ball game, the National League. Five, the American League three is the American League, the home team. Bots here in the home sixth. There's nobody out. Lawler steps back in. Count two strikes. Adinelli delivers. It's a curve missing in the outside corner. On the count now is two strikes and ball one. They're playing uh, Lawler, slightly pulled around toward left, with Musio playing a deep left field for him. Here comes the pitch. And there goes the ball hit into short center field. It is dropping in there for a base hit. Lawler getting a base hit into short center field. Duke Snyder came in to field it. The catching department for the American League has had three for three, two for Barra, now one for Lawler. And here's Al Kaline coming up. His second All-Star game, Al twice has fly to center field. 
He won the batting title last year, right-handed batter. The pitch. There's a hard ground ball in the hole of left field for a hit for k -Line. Lawler moves to second base. Musial feels the ball, throws in to the cutoff man, McMillan, the shortstop. The American League now has had five hits in a row. There's nobody out. Mickey Vernon coming up. A single by Fox, a homer, a two-run homer by Williams, a homer by Mantle, and successive hits now by Waller and Kaline against Johnny Antonelli, the new pitcher in the ball game, has put the tying run on first base for the American League. Big Powers just been called up to bat for Mickey Vernon. Mickey Vernon is a tremendous favorite here in the nation's capital, and therefore there's. A rather mixed reaction because the folks like to see Mickey Vernon in action, but here's a great hitter coming up to supplant him at the plate. And a right-handed batter, which is the reason for the change being made, in Dick Power, who is batting for Mickey Vernon. So Dick Power steps in of the Kansas City A's. Batting here in this big sixth inning. He has a slight crotch at the plate, and a curve misses on the outside. It's ball one. This is Power's second All-Star game, his third year in the majors. He's a handy guy, can play the infield and the outfield. Hit 319 last season, 294 going into the game. He jumps back from an inside pitch, which comes in low. Ball two. Power, 294 average with four homers, 29 runs battled in from Puerto Rico. Plays ball all year round. Ball two to count. The pitch is over in the outside corner for a called strike. And it's two balls, strike one. Lawler is on second. K-line on first, and there's nobody out. The American League has erupted with five base hits in a row, including two homers. Antonelli comes in with a pitch. There goes a ball into short left. Going back for it is McMillan coming in as Musial. Musial calls, and he has it. That's the first out now in the home six as George Cal, who was lined out to uh, deep left and grounded out, comes up for the third time, batting the number eight spot for the American Leaguers. Cal grips that bat in rather unique fashion. You can see wood between the grip of his two fists on the bat, style that Ty Cobb used so successfully when he was also squatting out those hits. Grips the bat with hands apart, just slightly. And here's a fellow who can uh, hit pretty well to all fields. Roberts and Lawrence warming up to the National Leaguers. Kell sends a foul off to the left going into the seats. Strike one to George Kell, up for the third time. Kell comes from Swifton, Arkansas. American League batting king back in 1949. Adinelli's pitch is low and scooped up by Ed Billy, the catcher, as it went toward the dirt. One and one to Kell. Runners Lawler and K-Line. There's one away, the infield playing at double play depth. Outfield slightly pulled around toward left. There's a sign now from Bailey. Antonelli with a stretch to pause. And the pitch, a fastball. It's a grounder going out to McMillan. Over to Temple for one. Back to Klosowski for two. A double play. Side retired. Here in this big sixth inning. In this frame, the American League has come up with three runs. Five hits. No errors. Now left. The score after six innings of this thrilling ball game at Washington. The National League is five. The American League is three forget, buy the only pen with a built-in spare refill. The new paper made Capri, only a dollar ninety-five. Two points, two ink supplies, and they're piggyback. Changes now. As we move into the uh, seventh inning, Vic Power is at first base now in the seventh inning, and Lawler is catching. Duke Snyder comes up. There are three number sevens in the uh, American League lineup. Keen, Power, and Mantle. Snyder looks at a called strike. 
A home run that was hit by Williams in the home six with his fourth in all-star play, tying Stan Musial for that coveted record. Duke Snyder, the batter, left-handed batter. He swings and misses on a curveball from Tom Brewer for strike two. This is Duke's seventh all-star game and his tenth year in the majors. Lifetime batting average over 300. Here comes the pitch, and he jumps back from an inside one to make the count two strikes in the ball. Big Duke comes from California. Last season batted 309 with 42 homers and 136 runs batted in to lead the league. 19 homers going into the All-Star Classic, 43 runs batted in with 295 average. The pitch comes in low to the Duke, who now steps out. On the count is two and two to Duke Snyder with Stan Musial on deck. It's the seventh inning, the National League leading the American League by a score of five to three in the All-Star Classic at Griffith Stadium in Washington. Brewer delivers a curve, it's missed, and Snyder goes down swinging on the strikeout. One out in the seventh inning, and Stan the man comes up. Stan Musial. His 13th All-Star game in his 15th year in the majors. That famous Musial crouch there. There goes a fly ball to deep left. Williams is going back. It's going up. It's a home run for Musial. Dan Musial with a home run into the new seats of left just a couple of rows back in left center. And the uh, odd part about that is that Ted Williams, who had just previously tied Musial for the record, now watches the ball sail up over his head into the seats as Musial again forges out in front with his fifth all-star homer. Here's Ken Boyer. The National League now leads by a score of 6-3. to three. First pitch drives Boyer back from the plate. Ball one. Man, these fellows can hit him. Time is called. Billy Martin is going down to the bullpen in right center for the American League. And while he's going down there across the field, and time has been called at the moment, Sherm Lawler goes out to speak to Brewer. Now he's coming back. This Boyer has made two great defensive plays, and at the plate, he has three hits and an RBI. Here comes the pitch, and he cuts and misses. Boyer leads the league in RBIs and hits for the National League. 321 average before the ball game, and he's been starring in the game. One and one the count. And there's a high foul going up on top of the roof outside the left field line. Two strikes and ball one to Ken Boyer. Well, we've seen some great names come through with homers today. Williams, Mantle, Musial, and Mays. Here's the pitch, and it's inside for a ball. Count is two and two to Ken Boyer, who comes from the large Boyer family. Cletus Boyer and Floyd Boyer, fine ball players. There's a ground ball going out to the shortstop, Keen, to throw over the first base to Power, and Boyer is out number two in the top of the seventh. As Willie Mays with a two-run homer in the fourth inning comes up. Willie up for the third time. His homer went halfway up on the bleachers, and he struck out his last time up. Jimmy Pearsall, another great outfielder, is not in the game yet, but ready if needed. There's a pitch wide. We've seen some great defensive players today, as well as batting stalwarts. Mays, of course, uh, center fielder, who's now moved over to the right field spot. There's a pitch coming in low. China's ball two to Willie Mays. Two out. One run across in the seventh inning on Musial's homer. And a swing and a miss. A pitch on the inside corner. A good hook by Brewer. Mm -hmm. 
Stan Musial showing his power by hitting to the opposite field here in Griffith Stadium for that round tripper. The pitch, and Mays watches it closely as it comes in low. Count now is ball three, and strike one to Mays, number 24 of the New York Giants. Here comes the next one from Brewer, and it comes in wide as Mays draws a walk. And that brings up another feared slugger, Ted Kluzewski. Big Clue doubled to left back in the sixth inning, making his entrance there. Then he later came around to score on a base hit by McMillan, moving him to third, one at a short right, just eluding Vernon. And he scored on a wild pitch. Kluzewski steps in with Mays on first base. Willie takes a good-sized lead. Brewer looks over. There goes Mays, and Kluzewski lines one on the pitch to right field. Going into the right field corner. Give it by K-Line. Mays is rounding third. He's on the way of the plate. He scores! And Mays came across to score by the time that Big Power, who was the cutoff man on the play, hoping to be the relay man on the play, took the ball close to the line between the first and and second there, as the throw came in from K-Line, Power got it, he fumbled it slightly, but he had no chance even to relay the ball to the plate. As May is off and running on the pitch, streaked all the way around to score, and Kozuski went into second base. Kozuski gets a double a second of the afternoon, an RBI, as May scored, and boy, it was he traveling. That brings up Ed Bailey with Kluzewski on second. And the pitch is a called strike. Score of the ball game, the Nationals seven, the American League three. Bailey the batter, and he takes high. One and one. Herb score warming up for the American League and Brooks Lawrence for the National League. Tom Brewer with a stretch of pause, a look at Big Clue, and the pitch is missed as Bailey takes a cut at one coming in on the outside corner. Kozuski really ripped that one to right. It took off like a shot. And May is also running, was streaking around the bases and made it home. Two strikes, ball one. Bailey waits. Here's the pitch. And it hits in the dirt in front of Lawler. On the way to third base is Kluzewski. He goes in standing up. A wild pitch. This Kluzewski seems pretty good at moving around the bases on a wild pitch. In the sixth inning, he scored on a wild pitch. And now he's moved into third base. Second wild pitch by Brewer, who is the fourth American League pitcher of the afternoon. Kozuski on third. They're two away. Two runs have scored in the seventh inning. Here it comes, and it's inside for a ball. Three and two. It's all the way to Bailey, who's played the full game so far. He's fouled out. He's walked, and he's flied out to left. Left-handed batter waiting. Here's the windup. And the three and two pitch on the way. There's a ground ball going to the shortstop. Up with it is Keen. The throw over to Power, and the side is retired. That takes care of activities in the top of the seventh inning. Two runs coming across. Two hits. No errors. A man left. And the score after the top half of the seventh inning. The National League seven. The American League three. Well, I was speaking to Jimmy before the ball game. Jimmy Pearsall. And I'm telling you, he's a handsome guy. You know, they're making a movie of Jimmy's life next month. An actor is slated for the lead. But Pearsall is good looking enough to play the lead himself. I won't say as Gillette Razor gets the credit for that, but Jimmy says there isn't another Razor in all the world for him. And no doubt about it, you look better and feel better when you shave with the Gillette Super Speed Razor that's matched to your face. There are three, and here's how to choose yours. The light model has minimum blade edge exposure and right edge angle for men with sensitive skin and most younger men. There's the regular for men with average skin and beard. And the heavy with pronounced blade edge exposure and different edge angle for men are like the heft and feel of a heavy eraser. One piece for convenience, instant blade changing and cleaning. And shaves that hit the very peak for comfort and good looks are positively guaranteed. Gillette Super Speed Razor, Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser, and Travel Case are yours for just $1. 
And during July and August, 10 cents of the purchase price goes to the Olympic Fund as a contribution by Gillette. New catcher now in for the National Leaguers, Roy Campanella, the Brooklyn Dodgers, comes in in the home seventh. Score seven to three, the National League leading. Here comes Ray Boone to bat for Brewer. Ray Boone of the Detroit Tigers. His second All-Star game, batting 252 with 12 homers going into this one, swings to the first pitch, and it's fouled back. Johnny Antonelli is on the mound. It's been friends spawn on Antonelli for the National League. Boone has been hampered somewhat by injuries this year. Last season, he and Jackie Jensen tied for the American League runs battled in leadership with 116 apiece. They're playing them full around toward left and deep. There's a slight breeze blowing out toward center. The pitch comes in low. Out is one one to Boone. Steps out, wipes his hands. Right-handed batter, he's 32, 6 feet, 185 pounds. In previous All-Star appearances, he's had a 250 batting average and four tats. Ninth year in the majors. Here's the pitch, and it's a fastball. A little wide of the plate. That is ball two and strike one to Boone. The wind keeps shifting quite a bit this afternoon. At times it's blowing to left center, at times to straight away, and at times to right center. There's a foul going off to the left of home plate. On the count is now two and two. Adonelli goes to the rosin back. There have been two homers by the American League and two by the National League, which have thrilled the fans so far this afternoon. There may be many more to follow. This is the home seventh with the score of National 7, American 3. Boone waits, and the pitch is a curve which comes in high from Adonelli. Count goes to three and two. Harvey Keene is on deck. Boone had 20 homers last season. He's a long ball hitter. Slight crack to the plate. Ready now for the three and two pitch. Here's the windup. The left-hander delivers, and it's fouled back to the screen. And with a new ball going out to the mound, we pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. Ready now for the three and two pitch. And Antonelli gets the sign from Roy Campanella. Here comes the pitch, a changeup, and there's a line drive taken by the third baseman, Foyer, who took him about 15 feet behind the bag. That one was one that hugged the line, and Boone is out. This Boyer's having a great day. Here's Harvey Keene, who is one for three. The pitch to Keene is down the middle for a called strike. Nine hits so far for the American League, with five of them coming in the sixth and all in a row. Strike one to Keene, he followed by Nellie Fox. There it goes, one out to short right field near the line. Mays moves, he's got it. About 15 to 20 feet from the right field line. Wasn't it out too deep. Mays got over there very quickly to retire Keene for out number two. That brings up Nellie Fox, who is two for three this afternoon. Here's a guy with a great batting eye. He struck out the fewest times in the league last year for any batter up as much as 400 times. And there's one on the outside corner as Fox went for it, tried to check his swing, but couldn't. It's a strike. Nellie Fox. He crowds the plate. That's one of the main reasons that he was hit so often last season. 17. That also led the league in that department. He signed up at an early age in baseball. 16. There's a pop-up out near the pitcher's mound. And Nellie is calling for it himself, and he's got it. So the side retired. One, two, three in the seventh inning. 
And the score after seven innings of the ball game. The National League seven, the American League three. Look sharp, feel sharp. Be sharp and listen, Mr. How are you fixed for plays? Do you have plenty? How are you fixed for plays? You better check. Please make sure you have enough. Cause a worn out plate makes shaving mighty tough. How are you fixed for plays? Better look to let the plays we mean. Two changes coming up now. As the eighth inning gets on the way, Herb scores coming in from the bullpen. He's the fifth pitcher that manager Casey Stengel has used in his strategy this afternoon of trying to stop these hot national leaguers. And out in right field, Jimmy Pearsall, about whom we were speaking just a short while ago, has taken over. Star coming on now to take over the pitching assignment. Herb Score of the Cleveland Indians. He was selected as a replacement for our teammate Ray Narleski, who retired from the classic with an injured elbow. This is Herb's first All-Star game, his second season in the majors. Big tall left-hander. He's 23 years old, 6'2, 185 pounds. Comes from Rosedale, New York. He won 16 and lost 10 as a rookie last season. Last year, score struck out 245 and 227 innings. The announcement just made that Pierce Hall's in right. He led the American League in whiffs. And he's far ahead in the league strikeout department this season. He was signed as a bonus baby by the Indians in 1952. And going into the game today, score is eight wins and six losses and leads the majors in strikeouts of 118. Roy McMillan, the first man to face score, and the pitch comes in low for a ball. McMillan has had a walk and two base hits. Score, a left-hander, delivers, and... There goes a pop-up foul outside of first with Vic Power going over in the coach's box to pull it in. So McMillan has retired for the first time this afternoon. There have been 11 hits so far for the National League. The pitcher, Johnny Antonelli. Coming up now with one out on the uh, top of the safe. Adonelli stepping in the National League's score. Seven, the American League three at this point. Adonelli steps in to face the southpaw, Herb Score. They're playing him rather shallow in the outfield and to hit toward left. The first pitch comes in wide for a ball. This score can really fire that ball. And he's come up also with a good curveball to go with the fast one. This makes it mighty rough on the hitters. Here comes the pitch. Adonelli cuts and misses at a fastball. On the count is one and one. Williams has moved closer to that left field line. Mantle is playing a rather shallow left center. And Pearsall is over in right center. Rather shallow. One and one. A fastball is missed. Uh, score pumped that one right down the middle. On the count now, it's two strikes in the ball. Johnny Cooks is now limbering up for the American League. Out on the bullpen in right center field. There's the sign now from Sher Muller. Two strikes in the ball to count. And the pitch to Antonelli is a curve which breaks wide. Storer confesses that he'd like a change up to go along with that fastball and the curve, and he's working on it gradually during the year, but during the course of the season, he has not pitched it too many times. He does well enough with that smoking fastball and the good sharp break in the curve. There's a strikeout as Johnny Antonelli misses a fastball up above the knees for out number two on the top of this eighth inning. Johnny Temple 
who has two for four in the ball game, comes up. He is struck out. He singled in a run by lining to short right center field in the third. He had a safe bunt in the fifth, and he struck out in the sixth. He comes up with two away in the top of the eighth inning. Score starts the windup. Comes in with a curveball. It's missed by Temple for strike one. When the American League comes up in the home eight, they'll have those two big guns coming up, Williams and Mantle. The pitch is low for a ball. Score smooths the dirt out in front of the pitching rubber. Now steps back. Count one and one. Here's the sign now from Muller. Infield talking up behind their tall left-hander. The pitch swung on and fouled off to the right, going out of play. There was somewhat of a breeze a short while ago, but at the moment the flag on the center field flagpole is hanging limp out there. Two strikes, ball one to Johnny Temple. We have two outs here in the top of the state. The score, National 7, the American League 3. Score starts the windup. Delivers a curveball, which comes in too low. And Temple backs away and steps out of the batter's box. Count now goes to two and two to Johnny Temple. Temple is a fast man, a good base runner. Last year, as a matter of fact, he had 19 stolen bases. Here's the pitch. It's wide. That makes it go all the way now to Temple, three and two. You know, attaining a 400 batting average is a mighty difficult feat, but back in 1949, this young fellow playing in the Pioneer League at Ogden had an even 400 batting average. Came up to the Red Legs in 1952, waiting for the three and two pitch. Here it is, and it's low, and Temple draws a walk. Putting a man on first now with two away in the eighth, and bringing up big Duke Snyder. Duke Snyder steps in. He's 0 for 2. He's flat out and he's struck out. Score a slow stretch in the pause. A look toward first. And the pitch is fouled back to the left. Duke was given that a real big cut that time. It's Johnny Temple taking a pretty big lead over there on the left-handed pitcher. Duke Snyder also starred in the World Series last season with four homers. Seven RBIs and a 320 batting average there. A very dangerous batter. Good clutch player. As a look towards first. Temple is on the way. There's a pitch wide. Lowers throw is high, and Temple slides in safely, being the throw to Harvey Keene. A stolen base for Johnny Temple. Well, he's a dangerous man on those bases, and he demonstrated there once again. Gets in a very quick break. There's no indication he's about to go, and the zoom is off and running. Stolen base, so that means the Temple is now in scoring position. The pitch was wide as it came in that time to Snyder. One and one to the Duke. Temple moving off second base. They're two away. There's the top of the eighth. Score, stretches, pauses, looks back. And then delivers, and it comes over the outside corner for a called strike. That was really whizzed in there, and Snyder steps out. Just his cap, bounds once on the plate with the bat, stretches just a bit, flexes the muscles, and he looks out toward the mound. Two strikes and the ball. Score ready. A curveball comes in low and wide of the plate. The count now goes to two and two. The National League is leading in the ball game by a score of seven to three. They've scored in every inning from the third inning on up to this frame. The American League's three runs came in the home sixth. All the result of homers, a two-run homer by Williams and Mantles round tripper. Here's the pitch. And there's a high pop-up. Waller with mask off. Cap off is waiting and now grips in fair territory. He lunges for the ball and takes it. Sherm Waller waiting for that mammoth pop-up. 
waiting in foul territory, lunged across the fair territory to pull it in. A fine catch, and the side is retired. So in this eighth inning, there are no runs, no hits, no errors, and one man, Temple left on second. And the score after the top half of the eighth inning, the Nationals seven, the American League three. Well, Casey Stengel is going all out to win today, and win or lose, old Case is a great leader. And he's a past master at bringing along young ball players. He even teaches them how to look like champions. And you can bet your sweet life Stengel bears down on the importance of keeping clean shave. He says, and these are Casey's own words, I shave with the Gillette Super Speed Razor, and I recommend it to my boys. Let's take it from there, because for my know, this is the only way to get a decent shave. Today, there are three Gillette Super Speed Razors, light, regular, and heavy. One is precisely engineered for you. It has the right blade edge exposure, edge angle, and weight to give you immaculate shaves. Comfortable all the way, and they're guaranteed. Ask for the Gillette Super Speed Razor with Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser and Handy Travel Case, $1.00. Some stores still have the razor set combined with an LP record album, both for one dollar. This free record features the voices of Bruce Gehrig, other heroes, and eyewitness reports of sports' greatest moments. Here's Ted Williams. He homered into the bullpen in right center last time. Up, cuts and misses at strike one. Wynn and Cook swarming up now in the bullpen for the American Leaguers. Williams at the plate. Strike one, the count. Antonelli's pitch. There's a top up going out into short left. Musial is coming in, throwing for it. He makes a dive for the ball and has it for the out. He may be hurt. He's getting up very slowly. The third baseman was going out. The two almost collided. As Ken Boyer went out, Musial came in. It was one of those balls that the infielder might have gone for, the outfielder. Musial called Doe for it, made the catch, and came up with it. He's limping slightly as he gets up, but he's going back to his spot. Walt Halston is going out to make sure that Stan, the man, is all right. Freddie Hutchinson also came out. He wants to take a very careful look. And we're getting a replacement now. Hank Aaron is going out to play in place of Stan Musial. Stan Musial is coming in, accompanied by Wall Alston. Out of the ball game, gets a fine hand. Listen. Hank Aaron now takes over. That was a great catch by Stan, player of the decade. Boyle was going back and Musial in. Musial made the dive for the ball, took it, hit the ground, came up with the ball, but has left the ball game. Here's Mickey Mantle batting right-handed. And it's strike one call. Williams going out to Musial. Boy, there's really a combination of names for you. Mantle homer last time up. Struck out his prior two at bats. One out on the home eight. Mantle cuts and misses. And an alley on the mound. Two strikes to Mickey Mantle. Be followed by Sherm Muller. Nelly rubs up the ball just a bit. Mantle waiting, batting right-handed. Here comes the pitch, and Mantle swings and goes down swinging. Strikeout. Mickey's had three strikeouts and a home run this afternoon. Sherm Lawler is at the plate. Catching department for the American League is three for three. Barra had two for two, and Lawler has one for one. Two outs in the home eighth. Score, National 7, American League 3. The all-star game here at Griffith Stadium in Washington. Slight breeze now blowing to right center once again. Lawler at the plate. And it's strike one called as Antonelli fires one on the outside corner. Just about letter high. Here's the pitch. And it misses wide. Uh, 
One and one to Lawler. Three pitches used by the uh, Nationals. Here's the pitch, and it's low. Two balls, strike one. National League has used Friends, Spawn, and Antonelli. And at the moment, they're leading in the ball game as we come into its closing stages here with two away in this home eighth for the American Leaguers. Lala the batter, two balls and a strike. And the pitch is low. Antonelli whistled a bit that time from the mound. He thought he might have gotten it in there around the knees, but it was ball three and strike one. Here's a sign now from Roy Campanella. And the pitch. There goes a fly ball to left center. Snyder waiting. He's got it. About 10 feet or so from the wall out there to retire the side. And so in the eighth, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And the score after eight innings of the ball game, the National League seven, the American League three. Well, I'll tell you, this Duke Snyder's really playing a game. Went back nicely for that catch out there in left center field. He's quite a man, that Snyder. Wonderful ball player, fine family man, a great guy to know. But he's got one of the meanest beards in the business. It's the Gillette Super Speed Razor for him. His choice is the regular. That's one of three Gillette Super Speed Razors. The light, regular, and heavy. Scientifically designed to match every combination of skin and beard. Find out for yourself what comfortable shaves, what clean, clean shaves you can get with the Gillette Super Speed Razor that's right for you. Choose yours in a nearby store. Early win is now coming in. Early win is coming in to do the pitching. It's been Pierce, Ford, Wilson, Brewer, score, and now win for the American League. As we move now into the ninth inning. Six pitches for the American League. Pierce, Ford, Wilson, Brewer, score, and win. An early win. In his third All-Star game, now comes on the mound a 17th season in the majors from the Cleveland Indians. A right-hander, 36 years old, he is 6 feet, 200 pounds, from Hartford, Alabama. And he won 17, lost 11 last season. He went to Cleveland and trade from Washington before the 49 season. He's won at least 17 games every year since 1950. He's struck out at least 200 men every year since 51. Won 20 games three times. And he pitched three scoreless innings in last year's All-Star game. Going into the afternoon's classic today, win at 10 wins and four losses. So early win takes over on the mound. Now as we move into the top of the ninth, as Hank Aaron is coming up for the first time. He replaced Dan Musial at the left field spot. Hank Aaron of Milwaukee. He's one of the young fellows in the classic. He is 22 years old, batting 309 for the season with 10 homers and 42 runs battled in. Right-handed batter, where's number 44? Early went all set to work, and the pitch is swung on. It's going into short right center where Pearsall is under it, and there's one away. One out on the top of the ninth. As Ken Boyer, who has starred defensively and offensively with some fine plays in the field and three hits and four appearances at the plate, comes up. Gets a nice hand as he does. There's the Ken Boyer. Steps in now to face early win. And fouls the first pitch by. Strike one. Ken comes from Liberty, Missouri. And he has five brothers and six sisters, including Cloyd Boyer. 
pitches out on the coast. He beat us, Boyer. Bonus player with the Kansas City A's. It's quite a family of Boyers. They can be mighty proud of Ken's performance so far today. Here's the pitch, and it comes in high. One and one from early win, who throws almost every pitch in the book, and then some. One and one. Wind delivers, and there goes a pop-up. Drifting back is Keen into short left, and he has it. Two away. Willie May is the batter. Two outs in the top of the ninth inning. The score, National 7, American League 3. Willie Mays, who has had a two-run homer. Back in the fourth inning. Struck out and walked since then. Sends a foul back over our heads for strike one. Two away in the ninth. one to Willie Mays. Wind delivers. It was a knuckler that time, which was wide. And the count now is one and one. Wind throws curves at various speeds and knuckler has slided the fastball. He can even throw with both arms, although he doesn't do it in ball games. Does it in batting practice sometime. Here comes the pitch low. Two ball, strike one. Outfield is way back there for me as it can powder that apple. Williams, Mantle, and Pearsall, the American League outfield. The pitch. He's caught in the miss. And the pitch which broke on the outside corner. And the count now goes to two and two to Mays. Two outs in the top of the night. American League will be coming up on the home night, and they'll be have to do a lot of hustling to catch up with the National Leaguers in the score department today. Ready for the two and two pitch. Here it comes. And it's strike three swinging. Looked like a knuckleball thrown up that time by Wynn as Mays went for it and struck out. So the side was retired with three up and three down in the uh, top of the ninth inning. Well, I'll tell you that Wynn can uh, really do a job. He makes that ball do tricks, doesn't he? Does a lot of things, as a matter of fact. He writes a widely read baseball column, too. He's a great ball player and able judge, and it's right out of his own experience when he says the only way to get a decent shave is with a Gillette blade and a Gillette razor. Now then, the shaves that are way, way out there pick you up and cool you off. It's the Gillette Super Speed Razor for you. Choose your type, the light, regular, or heavy, and you just never had it so good. Well, there have been 12 strikeouts posted by American League pitchers so far this afternoon. But in the scoring column right now, they trail as they come up in this whole night. Jimmy Pearsall will be the first man up now for the American Leaguers. Jim Pearsall, a great defensive player, coming up. Johnny Adonelli on the mound. And the pitch to Pearsall. There's a grounder going out to shortstop. McMillan's up with it. Over to Klazuski, and Pearsall is out. And there's one out in the home ninth. Vic Power is the next man up. Nick Power steps in with one out on the whole night. Adonelli's pitch. There's a grounder going out to Temple. He backhands the ball, knocks it down, picks it up and throws. His throw is wide. And going across first base is Power with an infield hit. It's a fine play by Temple who had to go far to his right to knock it down. Made the throw, but it took the first baseman off the bag. So it's an infield hit for power as the American League still keeps their hopes alive, and Kell comes up. Go 
George Carroll steps in, and it's strike one called the outside corner. Roy Seavers has just come up out of the American League dugout. He's the Washington representative on the team. Carroll sends one to short right field for a base hit. Power goes into second base. Mays fires a strike from right field on a line to foil a third. Willie Mays came swooping in on that ball hit into short right field, swooped it up, and in the same motion, unfoiled a strike to Boyer that almost ripped his hand off at third base. Powers at second now, and Kell is at first as Roy Seavers of the match comes up. who was on the mound, came in in the home sixth with nobody out after three hits in a row, including two homers. Finally got the side out on the home six. He's been pitching since then. Seaver's the batter, and the pitch comes in high for a ball. Levine and Roberts warming up for the uh, National Leaguers. Roy Seaver's at the plate. 17 homers for the Nats. And the pitch comes in low to Capanella. Ball two. There's one away. Runners of power and tell for the American League. American League trails by a score of 7 3 in the ball game. Seavers is the most homers of a hit by a Washington player in one season. He sends a high pop off inside a third. Infield fly, and the third baseman, Ken Boyer, has it for the out. So there are two away in this whole night as Harvey Keene comes up. Last chance to keep the American League hopes alive. Keene is one for four. Harvey Keene. Jumps in now. And it's strike one on the outside corner. Call strike. Strike one to Harvey Keen. Two on, two away. And it's low for the ball from Adonelli. Very, very few folks are leaving this ballpark. Very few. They're waiting to see anything can happen, even within one out away. With sluggers like these who are here this afternoon. One and one to Keen. There's a slow grounder going out to McMillan. He comes in, makes the play at second base, and there's the ball game. The force being made there on George Kell to retire the side. In the home ninth here, there are no runs, two hits, no errors, and two men left on base. And here are the totals down the ball game. For the National League, the final score, the National League All-Stars, seven runs, 11 hits, no errors, and seven left. The American League All-Stars, three runs, 11 hits, no errors, and seven left. In a moment, we will review the highlights of the game for you. 